recognizing our... We are getting the recognition we deserve. All right, let's start this baby off. Good right. morning, Mr. TK. Hey, Daryl, what's going on? How hey. was your Halloween last night? Halloween last night was kind of interesting. I wanted to have yeah. a picture to put up. Maybe I'll put it up in, in the editing. My, uh, okay. We, we, we didn't really do much. We, we carved pumpkins. The four of us carved our own pumpkins, each one. And then we kind of lined them up side by side and had our parents guess who did which one. Hey, hey, this this year has been bringing on all sorts of new uh, ideas and traditions, and I think that sounds like a good one. I was I was gonna walk my my two year old up and down the driveway ten times, but you know I'm lazy, so I took him to some families' uh, houses, got a bag full of candy. When I got home, there's two kids that had shown up uh, to get candy from our house, so my wife had a big bowl of candy, and I dumped it in the kids' bags, and I said, "Happy Halloween!" There you go. Well done. Yeah, it you worked see? out great. So the risk was worth the reward for them. Contactless uh, Halloween. So I know there was some really active areas, but not that much. Even in the Durham region, the streets were pretty much empty. I thought you were planning to uh, follow the crowd. I I looked for the crowd. I couldn't find the crowd. No crowd. So, uh, really? I followed the crowd by staying home, unfortunately, or or limiting the amount of uh, people that we went to go see. We had a great time. Kids yeah. dress up. They got to experience Halloween in, a, in some sort of fashion. They're happy. That's good. Hey. Yeah, good. We, we bought a few boxes of candy, put it out on the table, and said, Happy Halloween. Beautiful. And then Dad ate way too much of it. All right. I well, know. it was a busy week in Toronto real estate. I bet. Uh, one thing, though, Dale, I noticed is that not everybody's subscribing. Why do you think that is? What's going on with that? You know, I think we just need to remind them regularly. Just remind them regularly to say, okay, subscribe, like the video, share it, whatever you got to do. Smash the like button. Hit that bell. Share, hit the bell. Make a comment. You got it. Well, the the reality is, is that there are some people enjoying the content and most of them are not subscribed. So we would definitely okay. appreciate a subscription. Please hit that button below. Uh, what else content is delivered to you every week? Every What's going on in the news? single week. Okay. What's going on in the news? This well, week, Toronto real estate. As usual, there okay. is a tale of multiple stories. Oh, hidden agendas, perhaps. Hidden agendas on all sides. Okay. I think we would probably lefty, fall. Lefty, righty, righty, lefty. We would probably fall into the agenda list from time to time. Okay, maybe. So, 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 <laughs> so but it's it starts off. A little negative. Mm. It's, it's looking a little scary. RBC forecast mm -hmm. Canadian mortgage defaults will start rising next year. Ooh, end of 2021. Tough times. I do believe that most are running out of things to write about. Okay. Because I am noticing recycled stories. Not the same stories, just the same mo motif that comes I think up if you're gonna yeah i think if you're gonna guess like most of the news like they're talking about facts what's actually happened so anytime there's a forecast involved the longer you put out the forecast the the more room for error you leave to be able to retract that statement in about six months sure so it's good so instead of start saying like the end of 2020 or beginning of 2021 now it's well by the end of 2021 this is what we're gonna see at some point there will be mortgage defaults and we will see yes. that absolutely Prices may go up. They also may go down. And people may move in and they may move out. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> All right. So RBC, thank you very much for this brilliant forecast. I'm sure you paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. I was just going to say, I hope you didn't pay too much. <laughs> and whatever you paid, I will do it for half. Okay. Beautiful. We have... Toronto condo rentals are up more than 30%. That's news. Good. Well, people are getting more comfortable hiring a mover and getting their stuff out of storage and, and getting into a new place, of course. 30% compared to what? Toronto condo rentals are up more than 30%. I guess I'd have to get deeper into this. If... But... <laughs> That's the key part, right? So, I'm guessing it's to the same since, point. Since Confederation, condo sales <laughs> have gone up 10,000%. It's in here somewhere. But I mean, yeah. 
if I remember so condo, correctly. So condo rentals are up right now. This is the thing. Condo rentals are up right now because we still have a ton of people moving. We still have a ton of sales. There, there's, there's not an issue with um, people needing a place to live. That hasn't changed. There's actually a lot of foreign students who are back in Toronto already. We already know that immigration is still happening and that there's different programs. We know that people need a place to rent or live or, you know, so it's not like everyone just decided to not move. Well, and right? if, if you were deciding to just all of a sudden rent a place, like what a great time to get a what place a in Toronto time to do it or vacate your overpriced condo right now. That's on a month to month and go into the cheaper one in the same building on the same floor for like 20 percent less. And your landlord is going to be left with a vacant unit. So yeah, now the rentals have gone up. So 30% increase in rentals, no doubt about it. It's just we have a we have a huge supply that's causing the issues in uh, some parts of Toronto. Yes, listings skyrocket while leases are up and rents are down, making sense of the complex COVID rental market. I think we just made sense of it, right? We just we just kind of broke it all down. That people are moving. It's an opportunity to get out. You're not afraid of. Man, I remember there was like fifth. I was hearing fifteen offers on a rental a year ago. Sure. So well, you know, people that doesn't motivate people to move. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just stay here and figure things out. But all of a sudden, if you find out you can save four hundred dollars a month and jump into a better space in a better location, I don't think motivation it, to move. Yeah, it wasn't really about motivation to move before. I mean, the motivation to move before was like, hey, I got all these bags of stuff I'm bringing from Asia. Um, I need to put them somewhere. And I've got these kids, too. They kind of need a roof. So we need to mm -hmm. rent a place right now because I don't have a million dollars yet for my tiny little bungalow that needs to be knocked down and rebuilt. But I'm working on it. But I'm working on it. But I can afford yeah. this rent. So, re yeah, rentals are up 100%. People are moving more. Sales are up. People are moving more in the, in the, in the resale market, too. There's a lot here in this headline. Hold on. Let's dissect okay. this. Listings Sorry. are Slow up. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. is that rental listings? Rental. Yeah, rental, rental listings, listings are yeah. up. Well, leases are up. And that's important because leases are actually up, right? 30%. That is like crazy. Total leases. But that's crazy yeah. in a market like this to have rents up. You can't say that in New York. New York's dying. Mm. Right? Well. And rents are much down. Like, yes. So people that didn't immigrate that actually wanted to live downtown couldn't afford it before. Mm -hmm. it's like the oasis has opened the sea has parted opportunity is here let's compare new york very quickly there's a lot of major cities that people can move to in the states so if you're a city person and you're not going to move out into the boonies like some of the people are right now from toronto you have a lot of options can we you define know, can... boonies please uh populations uh and densities that are far lower than any metropolitan area so it sounds derogatory. Well, the tallest, the, the tallest building in town is four stories. How about that? Okay. Got it. Right? So, um, like they can go to Chicago, they can go to, uh, Dallas, they can go to, uh, India, like all these other places that are just like great places to live Colorado that they can still run their businesses out of and still feel like they're living in an actual, you know, socialized, uh, modern town or city. So we it's, don't have that option. Toronto Antonians, where, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You're going to go to Montreal or you're going to go to Vancouver or you're going to decide to get out of the city life altogether. You don't have a lot of options. So that's why a lot of people are staying here. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's not I mean, even the other metropolitan cities in Canada are not no. quite like Toronto. I mean, Toronto no, is no, nobody's going to Ottawa. Let's just I haven't heard that headline yet. My wife's my <laughs> wife's cousins moved to Ottawa, but they they grew up there. I think that's the only yeah. reason why no, you would move. No there. one's like I'm escaping Toronto to go to Ottawa. It is beautiful. And much love for Ottawa. Shout out to Ottawa. It is beautiful out in <laughs> Ottawa. That's for damn sure. Okay, average yeah. rent across all property types in the GTA down twelve point nine percent annually. Mm -hmm. Average throughout the GTA. The highest was. Um, waterfront and financial district and little italy i think it was it's not good yeah those are the highest 17 it, to 20 percent. i mean it's also not bad our buddy condo wong he mm -hmm. uh oh speaking of other uh podcasters and youtubers we should mention now 
You should okay. subscribe now and hit that notification bell because next week we have a special guest joining us. Bradley from Watson Estates. And I don't know if his last name is Watson. I should have asked him that. I'm guessing his last name Most is likely. Watson. Most likely. Somebody's last name is Watson. His first name is definitely Bradley. He has a wonderful podcast. And uh, he's going to join us next week. He has the fastest growing podcast in Toronto. Beautiful. Yeah, a lot of good content. But our other friend who doesn't know he's our friend, Kondo Wong. He's he, our friend, though. I think he will be. I think he will be. I want him to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> His last name, most likely. Like, <laughs> like that's... Right, we're not using our last names in the in the show. It's it's not show or, or real estate, but most likely these guys are using their last names, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I don't think his maybe his last name is Wong. Yeah, no. it's definitely not Condo. We <laughs> <laughs> have to edit this garbage out. Okay, so <laughs> so Condo Wong is saying like, listen, you have a couple of choices if you're listing a condo right now and the sky's not falling, but I mean, you can leave it empty mm -hmm. or you could rent it for a little bit less and get it off the, the shelf. Right. So he said, like, what's worse? Basically, should you not rent it, you know, for three, four months while you're looking for somebody to pay X or do you, you know, take a hit of two, three hundred bucks a month, which is only, you know, three grand a year. Uh, and get the thing rented. Well, let's let's. I want to adjust some advice that I was giving out before, because I think we were talking about um, this early on, and it seemed like this would be a much much more temporary situation where getting into the rental market and having, um, you know, somebody in at a lower rental monthly rate, but on the lease we have a higher amount, and we just basically are giving them the credit of one or two or three three months rent built right into the agreement as a, as a rent free pr period. Um, it looks like this is going to be ongoing. This this doesn't seem like the rental market's going to be bouncing back uh, over the next twelve months. Well, and technically, with that, well, I guess that kind of navigates around that rental freeze, right? Yeah. By doing so, it that way. So, so keeping something empty that seems like a a huge um, risk because you, what you're banking on is you're banking on the market returning enough to be able to make up for any lost months of rent which that just doesn't seem probable or likely it's, even with all the new immigration that's going to be coming in well and so we'll get there but the, we'll get there the, 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 it, it, it's definitely an issue but it, it leads back to what i was saying last week if you need that two three hundred bucks a month for this thing to work out well and you can't absorb this in downtimes don't yeah. buy a fucking condo as an investment just don't do yeah. it right yeah. if you want to invest your money in something like go put it somewhere else or save up more so that you can absorb something like this because this is going to happen it happens once a decade mm -hmm. agreed so yeah take that into consideration uh i would be looking at options to be able to find um a suitable tenant who's who's most likely going to be short term Another thing to avoid is multiple tenants on the lease, right? So multiple tenants on the lease, when you're renting out to students and stuff like that, what happens is plans change. And so if one tenant wants to stay and then he decides or she decides that they're going to be replacing somebody else on the lease, your hands are going to be tied. Hmm. Because as long as that principal tenant is able to maintain the unit and make the bill payments, then they, they may have an opportunity to be able to keep the unit a lot longer at the reduced rental rate. But if you allow only one tenant, one lease uh, holder to use the uh, property um, and they're responsible, if they decide to leave, then they're going to be giving notice and everyone else is going to have to come and you can deal with the new tenants as part of a new lease agreement um, in a way that could benefit you if the market changes. Can't you, just, to the, can't you just, as what? the landlord, limit who can actually be in the unit like can't you say it's just these two people no you can't no 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 unfortunately if someone says that they've got somebody to to move in um and they've got um uh, priorities like changing out all the tenants and subletting absolutely but when it comes to roommates and all that kind of stuff too it's 
it's it's a it's a grayer area, but it is pretty clear that um, you know people have the right to be able to have someone move in with them. If I say that I need help with my rent and that guy's moving in and he's going to start paying the bills, the landlord can't say I'm evicting you. I think the landlord right? can say I don't want that person in, living in my house, but I could be wrong. But let's move yeah. on from this because this is okay. Le lease agreements are very unexciting. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Canadian real estate price increases mm -hmm. may be solely due to the Bank of Canada. Okay, so solely is pretty. It's a pretty strong word. Solely, well, like come on. Let, let's look at this. Let's step back and take a look at okay. this. Okay. All right, I'm stepping back. We have record. Don't get too far. Oh yeah. Okay. We have record. Um, Interest rates. Okay, well, we have lots of records. Interest rates is one of them. We have low immigration. We have um, records in pricing. We have records in job losses. Like, we have the, the lowest GDP as an economy in God knows how long. Uh, our debt to GDP, uh, debt to GDP ratio is going through the roof and everything looks like fine unless you worked in a restaurant or Cineplex or a hotel or okay. an airline. A gym. Or a gym, right? But I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's a small segment. I mean, it has a huge effect, right? But like yeah. everything else is like rip roaring along, right? The market, the Okay, let's just take what we talk about, the real estate market. So the real estate market, the prices are going up, sales are going up, rentals are going up, rental prices are going down, and nobody's moving in. And like, of course it's only because the Bank of Canada is giving away all of this free money. There's no other reasonable explanation, okay? I don't care how strong the Toronto real estate market really is. It is in a normal setting where five billion dollars of bonds aren't being purchased a week by a, 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 a f entity that can just print money on demand like th this is not a normal economy but it's like monopoly like here's the rules so the rules are changing as we're kind of watching this unfold as this podcast has started and got to this point we have watched the rules of the world economy change the rules of money are changing right in front of us money okay. means nothing so what's happening real estate prices asset prices all the people in that upper kind of middle upper tier who have invested in real estate invested in stock markets are making a killing right now all the people that are like renting their, their apartment and working by the hour are getting hammered right now, right? And it's because the Bank of Canada is giving everybody all this money that's inflating the assets and deflating the currency. Okay. If that theory was true, I, li I like to disagree with you sometimes. So let's do it today. If that theory was true, then we would still see a rise in condo prices. Condo Throughout. prices are, are still, other than resale, like new condo prices are up. Okay, I agree. But there's obviously a certain part of the population that's moving from one area into another for a reason. I mean, I'm not, I'm not moving right now. Interest rates are low. I can go and get a better place and do more stuff and, and have more stuff. Like, there's different things that people have to look at. It's like why people are moving yeah maybe they can afford a little bit more and that's going to be of course a factor when you're looking at qualifying for a mortgage but the whole process of moving is stressful nobody i've ever met enjoys the process thoroughly inside and out they look at it from what is my motivation what are my capabilities what are my options what's the worst case scenario what's the best case scenario and they make a decision but there's a lot of emotion there's a lot of things to consider and cheap interest rates solely that word solely that's why i'm disagreeing i are not why people move and why prices are going up prices are going up because we don't have enough houses freehold properties for people to purchase prices are going up because there's still a shortfall in places for people to live in toronto no but it, forget about moving it masks the underlying issues with the actual economy so by all of these prices going up even if you don't move you are getting wealthier right you're getting wealthier so you're not yeah but you're not afraid you can take it out at at like one percent you can take out a line of credit you can live like a king now you can buy whatever the hell you want you can go wherever the hell you want only because of this, because if the market was in recession, like full-blown recession mode, 
none of this stuff is happening. If the Bank of Canada wasn't pumping all this money in to keep it propped up, I'm not complaining. This is amazing for us, right? This is going to go crazy. And, and I want to kind of like build up a crescendo here. So, okay. So I'm just, I'm just pointing out that the, the interest rates are very important and I agree, but prices going up has a lot more to do with um, the reasons why people are moving than just uh, interest rates alone. Well, okay. So That's it. I'll leave it at that. Okay, fine. We'll, right. we'll box later. Bank of Canada sees interest rates on hold into 2023. And that's important because that gives a lot of people confidence that they can borrow and they're not going to get pummeled by borrowing, right? They're not going to get pummeled mm -hmm. for two more years, uh, you know, for borrowing a bunch of money to build a business, to buy a car, to do whatever the hell they're going to do, right? It's like, yeah. and they're saying that they're, they're, just, they're saying this Tiff McCallum guy, He's like, go borrow money. We're going to get out of, we're going to get through this thing, but you're going to have to borrow some money to do it. Anyway, so they're going to keep it low, 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 no, low, low. No, low. I understand that. I understand that. And uh, my lack of knowledge in the bond uh, yield market is is creating more questions than answers here. But if the, Can the Bank of Canada stops buying all those bonds, which they already have committed to slowing down their purchases. They've reduced it, yes. Will that not increase the amount of bond yields that investors are able to obtain, which would then lead to higher interest rates, whether the Bank of Canada wants to or not? So they've been buying, they've been changing the, the, the buying pattern as well. So they've been reducing the amount and buying longer term bonds. So they've been buying like five year bonds so that they're fixing that interest rate out there for five years, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that answers your question, and that's all I actually understand about that. So we're going to okay. move on to another driver here. That's, a, that's an area that people should explore if they want to know where interest rates are going in the next two years. They're going nowhere. What's going on with the bond market? Well, I mean, the, 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 the Bank of Canada rates going nowhere. What banks do with that after, we nobody knows. But I mean, they're not going up anything significant that's going to really change much anytime soon, right? I mean, a quarter point doesn't really do much. Anyways, mm -hmm. Canada, this is big news. Big okay. news. Okay. Big, big, big I'm news. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. What is it? Canada to target over 400,000 immigrants per year for the next Boom. three years. What Boom. the hell is going on? So this year, we're, we're way behind target. We were like... They must, have, they must have got my email. I think they're actually subscribed. They might be subscribed to our channel when they're like, these guys are so pro-immigration, we should add more people. So check this out. 2021, 401,000 immigrants. 2022, 411,000 immigrants. 2023, wow, the most ever. 421. Wow. It's the most ever since like after the great... 1913 was uh, 401,000. That was the most ever. Right. Yeah, so now they're now they're going to go and beat that in I th 2022. I think back then though they were giving away like free land or like five dollars for a hundred acres if you moved here. <laughs> Definitely, think about all the boats that would have had to come across for that many people. That's Isn't a lot of boats. Can you imagine though? Like, how yeah. how did they build all of that? Like, we can't even keep up now with less than that. How the hell did they do that? So they the increase in population from at that time from 401,000 from wherever they were was 2%. So that would be similar to us having 2 million people come in one year today. 2 million people Wow! in one year. Imagine that. I that's can't, a lot of people. That's Where a, do they all live? But that's, that's 1.2 million people in three years. That's even crazy. And what happened after the greatest increase? What was the decade after that? The roaring 20s. The roaring 20s roaring things ripping were, 20s thing, things were things were beautiful i think that's what we're going into we're going into the ro roaring 20s 2020 listen canada is we're just starting off with a little pandemic we are i'm telling you i really I, I, people hate the government i think they're doing a really good job i think they're moving towards like green energy they understand that construction and real estate is what 
like holds up this economy in Canada, which is like mm-hmm. underpinned one billion percent by immigration, right? So 100%. even even now they're trying to get people in. They're doing all these express kind of like whatever the hell they're doing. I don't know enough about it. All I know is that they're really trying to bring people in. I I see like airplanes all the time. I mean, I don't know why they're not just somehow coordinating like one full airplane full of people from this country. Like you're coming now. Get over here. Quarantine. We'll put you in a hotel for 14 days. Go quarantine Mm -hmm. and then get into the economy. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, Yeah, they really are. Like it's going to be like the skilled workers um, to replace uh, the aging population. So people that it's like very like targeted, right? Like these are the type of skills that we're needing and that these are the types of permits we're looking for uh refugees right obviously because we're, we're a compassionate country and, and we're here to make sure that everyone's got an opportunity to live uh like we do and what was the third category was that the express entries um i'm trying to so. find it but, e- but either way you're, you know there's there's uh people who are coming in it's basically here yeah it's 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 people that already have family it's like People that are high skill, high income, and then like normal people that just are coming and need a job and they're going to join the labor force, right? Like the, the real labor force, hard labor. But this mm-hmm. is this is perfect. This is what we need. This is going to be – it's going to be even crazier here. Soon as yeah. soon as those, those, those gates open, soon as the border opens up, it's going to be crazy. So hold on. Let me build on this. Okay. Canada ranks third of 50 countries for top nation brand. Okay, so Ooh. as a brand, as a nation. Well, listen, I mean, at the root of all this stuff, it's a it's a corporation, right? It's a business, yep. uh, and it develops a brand. I mean, we market. We don't see it because we live here. Nobody cares to market Canada to us. But like in other What's countries, our our, What's our brand. What are we known for? We are known for free health care, being really nice people, you know, mm-hmm. being like the, 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 well, what are we talking about? Canada or Toronto? Well, Canada. Well, accepting of, accepting of uh, different cultures. Yeah. So like that's throughout Canada. And we give away free money now too. And even better, weed's legal. There, this is a perfect storm for all kinds of reasons. We and kick, we kick butt in World War Two too. No, but listen, we we want them to come. We're not like saying, "Hey, we don't want you to come." Like putting up walls and saying, you know, like screw you guys. We're not letting you guys in. We're we're just like, come on, bring it on, come on in. It's beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, and we and we also have. Um, but as a know, brand, the- right? When you have a. When you're top three in brands of the world, when all pandemonium's breaking out in all kinds of places, while p- people are making more money than ever, like what an attraction. And then, okay, if you're looking at moving to Canada, like you said before, you're looking at Vancouver, you're looking at Toronto, and you're looking at Montreal. And if you have any disdain for the French language whatsoever... Or don't feel that it, it would be imperative to learn French while you're already having to learn English. You probably will take anything in Quebec off the list, right? So where are you going to move? Hamilton. Sure. Hamilton's okay. Toronto. I'd- so let's let's the numbers that I knew from 2018 were 40 percent, 42 percent of uh, newcomers were coming to Canada. Can- right to Canada or Toronto? So, or to Toronto, sorry. Right. So 100 and, 168,000 it- of that 401,000 are coming to Toronto. Is that Toronto or Ontario? Uh, Toronto. I think How it's, is it possible? I think it's Ontario, but like 130 of that is Toronto. So you think that most, when, you, when we're looking at people coming to Canada, that most people, like over 50%, are not coming to Ontario? No, I'm saying that like... The, the, oh, that's what you're saying. Forty-two percent. I think. I think at least half of the Canadian uh, new Canadians are coming to Ontario. Either way, it's a big number. Huge. We're talking about increasing the hundred thousand um, new Torontonians a year to at least one hundred and fifty thousand. Like we're talking about a huge increase in population in Toronto alone. Let's call it fifty thousand because that's what the hope is. That's what the the expectations are. Where are those fifty thousand people going to live, Daryl? Give me the plan. They're going to instantly all the robots. They're going to where are they going to live? I mean, listen, we have the most construction going on of all time right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So, 
I mean, the, the, there's, there's, they're building up units, but they're, I don't care how many robots we bring on anytime soon, which we won't okay. bring them on anytime soon. Okay. If we thought we had a crisis before this thing, listen, I can't get a meeting with the city for my property for just a pre-consultation meeting. I, I asked for this uh, about seven weeks ago. Okay, just for a pre-consultation meeting, like nothing major. They sent me, after going back and forth with what they needed from me for a couple of weeks, uh, they told me within five days, I'm going to have a date set. That was like five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And there's no end in sight. Now they're just not responding to my emails. So I'm pretty sure that there is going to be um, a shortage of new applications compared to normal. Right. Okay. Plus a flood of immigration. Plus, hold on, let me add to this story here. So have you ever heard of something called Kanzuk? C-A-N-Z-U-K. No. Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and the UK have been working on a new trade deal. Great. And this has been going on in the background for a while, but they're really mm -hmm. just starting to talk about it now. But it seems like... The loyalists can uniting. Well, you know what? What they're saying is like all four of those countries are very similar. And they all speak English. They all have British like law systems. Yeah. They're all part of the Commonwealth. Uh, so but they're talking about like opening up trade, opening up borders, opening up like having our passports all be interchangeable. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people if you're in New Zealand or the UK or Australia you know, might want to come live in Toronto and they have a passport. They don't even have to get a visa or anything. They could just come and work here. Yeah. Neat. I like it. Really neat, right? So that's going to definitely have a big effect. And and what's happening is th this is going to act as like a buying group, right? So now all of a sudden we become like a population similar to the United States with the four countries combined. So now we have all this clout in the world for buying stuff cheaper and not having to rely on the U.S. so much and China so sure. much. Yep. This is really it's important stuff. Trade, yeah, we're able, we're able to uh, have a little bit more um, leverage. But w regardless of my understanding of it, I guarantee it has a positive effect on immigration into Toronto and the housing market. That's for damn sure. So we're talking 50,000 people, okay? So 50,000 people decide that they want to uh, move to Toronto. So we have 50,000 more people who need places to live. Are any of those 50,000 people planning on being homeless when they get here? No. Based on our looking, recent surveys. Our research, yeah. we've, had, we've had successful surveys at 100% that nobody wants to be homeless. Time so, and time again. 100% of the surveys came back at 100%. We don't know any homeless people. However... Ten, ten year, However, I, I did ten, drive ten downtown average. and there. Ten year average. What's what's the ten year average on new units for um for condos? The ten it's like fourteen thousand something. It's like fifteen thousand. Year to date is seventeen thousand. Fifteen thousand four fifty one is the ten year 15, average. 000, fifteen thousand units. It's crazy. We're gonna be so short. How are we supposed to survive? Where's everyone gonna live? We are gonna be so short. So you jumped ahead a little bit. Let me let me build this up a little bit more just to get to this because this is part of the answer. So we okay. are, real estate lobbyists are pushing to cut the land transfer tax. And okay. in the States, they have something called opportunity zones. And they're looking to bring those to Ontario as well, which is basically areas of the city that they want to intensify, that they're going to give huge tax breaks to the developers in order to do it to bring on low or affordable housing which okay. ne never works but anyway yeah well did you read that study that they did mit had the study about um dezoning uh will actually increase prices yeah and i had that on my list and i took it off because i thought it was going to be too much it's, to it's, talk about today as well as all this other stuff but yeah, yeah it, it, it was in the really right direction but it but it does make sense and so those zones that you're talking about are a more practical use of cutting the red tape because it means that it's going to limit it to certain pockets of the city, which then is going to increase the density in those areas without affecting the low rise market. Like, 
But it doesn't work like that here. It doesn't work like that here. We already have an unbelievable official plan, an unreal zoning planning in place for all over the city. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you know exactly where they're going to let you do what. But then all these opinions and counselors and nimbyism and all this crap gets involved. Uh, You know, planners thinking, oh, it should be brick facade and it should be we want you to move it in one foot. Why? I don't know. I just want you to move it in one foot. And it's all this kind of stuff that like screws up that that possibility of no red tape. They've given us guidelines like I've been saying for years. Look, you gave us a manual, right? This is what it says you can do on this property. Go do it. Do anything under it, but you can't do more. And go do whatever the hell you want. This is the zoning here. Don't come to us and and, and try and get more, and then we got to fight back and forth till we get somewhere in the middle. That's that's what happens all the time, and it's a it's a disaster. But but Mm -hmm. that article was really brilliant, and I had never seen it that way. Where to take a, a, a a seventy foot property for example, or a 60 foot property, um, you know, most people would think that if you buy that property for normal price and cut it in half, that you're going to have two cheaper lots, right? But what happens when people know the zoning that they can accomplish on their property, the value changes. So a house, for example, that you could only do one house on, it's worth the price of one house, right? If you know that you can sever the lot and build two houses, it changes the value of the land drastically because now it's it's a totally different zoning, right? Sure. So so, so the co- the cost of construction, not the, the cost, cost of construction, of, the hard the hard cost, the cost of severance, the soft costs and a profit has to be subtracted from the highest and best use price. Well, and that's what changes what the, which, which is what that article didn't really cuz they were trying to um, have a sort of underlying message of that dezoning completely is not going to be good because it's going to actually raise prices, and that's what the MIT study found. But you and I both know that that's not exactly how it works. That no matter what, when you're taking the risk to be able to go and put that uh, application forward, when you have to put out all the funds and capital to be able to get the project completed, at the end of the day, you're going to want some profit. A lot so of much- it. Exactly. So it's much less. So even though that lot, you could end up doing the two lots or the bigger building or whatever it is, there's still going to be a lot of room on the table there. doesn't mean that everybody in the neighborhood is going to have to pay more now to get on those properties. So, so now having said all this, we have another article that says these condos are set to go up in Toronto without full public or city consultation. So oh. there, there's, a, there's a few buildings downtown in the East okay. End uh, by mm-hmm. a few gigantic developers that they have just push through with a uh, so, some some official power that Mr. Ford has. I'm sure it has something to do with his campaign at some point and donations, but regardless, they are trying to push things through. I mean, they're doing it. We have evidence of it. Now, people are not so happy. Um, I'm a little jealous because that sure. what a beautiful thing to have. I mean, money, this kind of money costs a lot of money for an extra year and a half or two years, right? Yeah. So to get pushed through quickly is a godsend. So anyways- You should have grown up in Etobicoke and, and hung out with the forts. You, you missed out. If you only knew that, you know, hanging out and doing crack with those guys 30 years later That's would pay off. Fair. That's not fair, yeah. Well, but it's true. Anyways. Okay. Uh, let's get back to where you were heading with the new condo market. Absolutely. Which You've is- been saying this, but I, I guess obviously, you know, you and I aren't aware of every project, every condo launch that's happening. Um, you know, they're looking at everything as far as the GTA goes. So the GTA, you and I have been talking about Vaughn a lot, but we're really ignoring it because there's just been so many launches and so many things that are happening in one area. And I think that's contributing to this. Um, to that number but there's also lots of downtown stuff they were talking about a lot of down stuff downtown stuff too which is great knowing that um, buildings are still attracting a lot of attention and the average price per square foot is ridiculous ridiculous ridiculous, ridiculous. but listen this is all stuff that like I couldn't quantify without this report but I could feel and I think everybody could feel I mean listen all what does it say second quarter numbers were down 22 percent right mm-hmm. And now yep. they're up 30%. And they're up, up 30%. They're up 30% for a time period that we know is slower and has less launches. But I mean, 
the, the market is showing resiliency, which is important, right? And it's also, I mean, people are definitely on their heels about what's going to come down the pipe. But I mean, I think it shows us that there is still considerable um, confidence in the Toronto market, right? These are people that are buying stuff for years out. For sure. But here's something that I believe has changed and I don't have the numbers to back it up. But again, just intuition here. 65% of new launches were in the 905 region. Sure. Like imagine ten. Imagine ten years ago, it would have been like five percent of new launches are in the nine hundred five region. Sure. Now it's six sixty five percent. So but, we're getting that urban sprawl, right? You're starting to get things that are happening. Well, and it just makes sense. I mean, the land, at least at the moment, is much cheaper, which allows the units to be cheaper. I mean, listen, every twenty five fifty thousand dollars in price point changes a lot of potential purchasers, right? Yeah. And in Vaughan, I mean, you're talking about a million dollars plus. I mean, townhouses are a million bucks. So we were, if you're going to end up buying a condo and you're going to end up looking at, you know, five, six, seven hundred thousand. I mean, that is the most affordable market. So you're going to take what you can get. Yeah. I don't even remember where we drove to this weekend, but we were like an hour and a half away from here. West. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. West. Where the hell did we go? Anyways, it was like eight hundred thousand dollars for a new townhouse. Yeah, crazy. It's it's all crazy. But I mean, listen, it's yeah. saying here, average price per square foot is like over a yeah. thousand. Uh, nine oh five. GTA, that's nuts. GT GT or sorry, nine oh five is nine fifteen a foot in the nine oh five. Yeah, just in the nine oh five. Yeah. And and Toronto is twelve seventy five. City okay. of Toronto proper twelve seventy five a foot for new launches on average. Yeah. Just crazy. I know it's just crazy. And like, so that's what people are doing. They're all buying the resales right now. And I think that there's, look, I, I'm, I'm not in the resale uh, camp. I, I believe you should buy something because you can walk in it and you can see what the unit is that, you know, what you're paying, that you're not taking any chances by buying something today and it not being worth what you pay three, four years down the road. But with all the information out there right now with immigration and with the market, the way it is, and that the rental market's not as strong, you know the the case is there. It's pretty strong for for buying a pre construction condo being a, being something that's going to make sense down the road, and you're going to be able to get at least the prices that they're promising you, if not more. Well, and that's a good asset because you're putting in a little bit of money with all these incentives. I was looking at a few of them this weekend. Fifteen percent. The uh, builder is going to be giving you five percent. Um, longer periods of time so you can put like five or t uh, five to ten percent down in the first year but then you've got like two three years to be able to come up with the other ten percent right so there's a lot of different incentives oh, that yeah. people will look at and say well i'm not getting into the market as a rental property any other way i can't afford to put 20 percent down on a resale condo so this is a solution for me and i know i can put 10 and i'll get the other 10 in the next three years yeah so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who can plan so far ahead where they're going to live three, five years down the road, but apparently a lot of people. It's but investors. I mean, it's a lot of investors, but it, it's not yeah. all investors. It's really not. I get it. But I mean, there I is a lot. Now, now, one thing we didn't mention is that numbers are definitely down year over year to last year. Um, but I mean, the trajectory is what I think is important when you are in the midst of the second phase of a global pandemic mm -hmm. so we are very 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 two, weird we're on par with 2018 and on par with 2015 correct yeah. uh we are in par with yeah 2018 2015 exactly and we're so who knows we'll but see we still have the last quarter one more quarter, <laughs> one more quarter. so but are people yeah, gonna buy a place or go bananas on you know christmas shopping well, I think no matter what, more people are going to be buying this quarter, this fourth quarter than there were before. Because I'm already looking at my Christmas plans, my holiday schedule. It's looking pretty empty. You were saying you're going to go to Florida. Were you kidding or were you serious? Well, besides that, I'm talking about family schedules, uh, you know, fa family gatherings, you know, different things like that. There's a lot less going on. Right. There has to be because, I mean, yeah. right now we have like 550,000 cases worldwide per day. There you go. It is off the rails right now what's going on. It's crazy, isn't did it? You read, did, you, did you see this week, though, they released the numbers on where the cases are coming from? And restaurants was like 
it doesn't even exist. And then uh, gyms was like a super low number too. And it was mostly just the schools and the daycares. What do you think they're going to say about that now? Like, how are they going to turn this around when they come time mid November about that 28 day stage two? Uh, I don't know. To, it, what are they going to do? They're in a tough spot, right? They're in a tough yeah. spot because they no, don't. No politicians like to retract. They never like to go backwards. It's not even that. It, I mean, it, they, it kills them. but they know they're crushing a lot of people. Like they are yeah. crushing a lot of these people. But they had a good reason to do it when they did it. They said, hey, this is to protect you guys and this is why we're doing it. But now the numbers came out. Now we all know where everything is being, um, where the issues are. Yeah, but if you let people congregate in small inside places, the numbers don't go down. They don't. They just don't. Okay. They, but you, these you, numbers are not based off of the numbers that existed when the stage two part two was in effect. These are the numbers when everybody was congregating. So it's still a very small number. It is. Yeah. So it has to, it has to be I, at one point or another, there has to be some element of risk. Somebody has to be the sacrificial lamb, right? So I'm going, I'm going out with people with masks on and gloves and meeting people that I've never met. I'm going inside homes. I'm meeting people who are, seniors or or, older generation people yeah um and we're taking all the precautions because there's a necessity there's something that needs to be done sure i mean listen there's one precaution you're not taking staying home what is it i just realized i didn't have my lights on today i'm gonna be very dark in this video Um, tanned i feel tanned yeah okay um what was i just saying the one precaution that I'm not taking. Yeah, what you're, is it? well, you're not staying home, right? I'm not staying home, yeah. Me and my wife have this discussion regularly, like, you know, just like you're saying, like, people like TK, everybody's going out and they're living their lives and they're doing their things and they're taking their precautions and they're not getting it. And I'm like, yeah, but if we don't have to go out for something, we're just limiting the risk of exposure, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's very you nice. You will have much less risk of getting hit by a bus if you stay home all day. If you stay home all day, the likelihood of a bus crashing through your house and hitting you is almost zero. Well, especially where I am, the bus routes would have a tough time getting through all the other houses on the way to my house. <laughs> but it's true. And, and listen, I mean, listen, it's not, you know, there's the argument that not that many people out of the total population get it. But I mean, a lot of people mm-hmm. are dying from it and it is pretty serious, especially, you know, for, for certain people. And I just don't understand, like, you can't, you really, you got to go for dinner. Like you, like I, I drive by these patios with people in their gloves and hats and coats and there's a fire beside them and they're sipping some wine. And I'm like, do you really have to do that? But I mean, maybe if they're living in a condo and they haven't been out for a week, I don't know what people's stories are. I just honestly, to this, this is the. Tr- I'm not just saying this to be, um, you know, all uh, fine and dandy here. Most of my meals that I eat out, I'd say about eighty percent of my lunches that I have, I'm having at the places I'm having to support the businesses. I have food at home, and sure. I say, you know what, I better go and support them and give them ten or fifteen bucks because I know that they need it and I know that that's going to help them. So yeah. I, I think that's why a lot of people are going out is we want restaurants to exist in the future. Yeah. I mean, that's very noble of you. And th- oh, thank you for you. thank you for risking everything for people like us. Well, uh, because saying, I, I, eat, I can't support and, them. And these businesses need to be able to be uh, supported. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I yeah. we're, we've been ordering in a lot more, not because of that. Yeah. But we have okay. been. Well, it's good. It's good to do that as well, too. Think about the business owner. Right? Well, I am a sociopath, so. <laughs> what else have we got though? Didn't didn't we have comments to answer though? Not really. We had one comment that uh, somebody was talking Let's about. Let's get to that, Daryl, and, and wrap it up. What's what are the comments to uh, to answer? Okay, so this person here, Urban Zen Girl. I don't know what is going on in everyone's heads, but I am sad people are living. I think it's leaving. Leaving. Yeah. I was not. It could be living though. We're not sure. I was. No, no. I was not sure about your video at first because it's my first one I have seen on this channel. You guys go on and on like a bunch of energizer bunnies, but you do mention a lot of important points. Thank you. Do you have any thoughts on the best property to actually live in long term? I already have a condo downtown, which I live in and would okay. not be selling. But I wondered what option is the best for potential growth in the long term. 
Would it be okay. another condo since things are going a bit cheaper? Warren Buffett said something like, be greedy when others are fearful. That sort of stuck with me regarding condos. A condo townhouse for more space? Question mark. Or a freehold? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Mm -hmm. The only freehold I could get would be a tiny starter home in neighborhoods like Caledonia, Fairbank, Carosa, Italia, Mount Dennis. What did I say? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I, I'm reading. Yeah. Corso, Italia, Mount Dennis, Rockcliffe Smith. Gerard Coxwell, getting in would be hard with some bidding involved, and it would s definitely not be the prettiest house, that's for sure. And some are I, downright I, I, I ugly. Here. Do, you want, do you want to get to the answers here? Yeah. Well, is there All any right. other question well, let's, let's in here? Talk. No, that's her question, is what, sh what should she do? And the question isn't like a one-size-fits-all, because um, she's already in a condo. She doesn't plan on getting rid of it. Beautiful. That means you know she wants to keep real estate and hold on to it. Excellent, excellent option. Is a condo townhouse going to meet her needs? You know, is that tiny little house that's a freehold that sure you own the land underneath you, is that going to be something that's going to provide her the lifestyle that she wants? I mean, these are all the, the, the reasons that people move into real estate. Anybody who just buys it because they think like, well, I'm going to buy the smallest house in the street and I'm going to suffer for the next 20 years and sell it to a developer. I mean, that's a pretty miserable existence. You know, I think that you should live a life that you're going to enjoy and, uh, you know, buy smart and, and make sure that you're making the best decision. I think a condo townhouse is the next step up from a condo. And if that's going to give you the space, do you have children? Do you have family? Do you have people who come over often? Is, are those three bedrooms with the extra living spaces going to mean that you get to have a better enjoyment in life? If you go and survey all those people, they always do this online, like 80, 90, 100 years old, and they you know, give people advice, they, how, to, how to advise the younger generation. None of them are ever saying, uh, you know, hang on to your real estate, children. Like, it's always about happiness and joy and finding um, the best parts of life. And if buying a, a condo townhouse is going to meet your needs, keep you from being house poor and actually meet all your, you know, lifestyle needs, then that's a great option. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go into the freehold market. The freehold market in Toronto is expensive. And unless it can meet your needs, you're going to have to leave the core. But she, all the areas that she listed are in the more central regions. Um, you know, Co Coxwell is a little bit further out, but still more central near transit. Maybe that's really important to her. So going into Scarborough or outside into the 905 is not an option. And that's what I would recommend if you need the four bedrooms. It's like, you know, get out of the city and find another option like the go or, um, you know, driving, commuting, and everything else. But if you're going to be looking at staying in the core, then, yeah, maybe a condo townhouse is a great space for you, and those will always be in demand because condo townhouses, we don't have enough of those. Condo townhouses don't exist enough in the core. We didn't we didn't build enough of them. They weren't vi very viable projects for builders. They always look to get mid-rises or above, right? So yeah, that's the answer. That is the answer. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like that uh, Mount Dennis area. I think Mount Dem Dennis is a great area. It's up and coming. I think it's a good opportunity for a lot of appreciation in the next few years, if that's a factor, because they mm -hmm. have the uh, LRT stop there and they have the, um, what's it called? The Up Express stop right there. Yep. So it's a, it's a nice little hub. The prices are really cheap right now. It's pretty close to the city, and you can get downtown on that Up Express in like 15 minutes. Beauty. So what type of jobs will be left at the end of this? This is our Monsieur Fortuna. What type of jobs will be left at the end of this, Daryl? So, so what, we, what we were talking about was those uh, jobs that are leaving – uh, and uh, and jobs that are going to come as a result of this thing. And I was saying, you know, yep. heavy tech, heavy tech. There's going to be a lot of tech. And he's like, yep. I got downsized. I'm in uh, IT, right? Yeah. Well, so what IT, though, is is what, though? Because IT could be supporting offices, right? So it's like that's what, what, well, what classification so, of IT are you in? Yeah, everyone's well, working from home. They don't need the IT guys anymore. Well, and tech, I guess, is a little bit too broad a term because IT technically would be tech and I yep. guess that is incorrect. So what I see as jobs is going to be, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you are it's trying to figure out what to do, you should learn coding. You need to learn coding, something to do with computer sciences and coding. That is the rock star of the future. That, mm -hmm. th that is where the already, I mean, you can come out of school and make close to six figures if you're a decent coder. 
So coding is where a lot of new job growth is going to be across all kinds of sectors. And if you're into, if you're into real estate, there's going to be a million tech jobs in real estate. If you're into uh, financial, there's going to be a million jobs in financial tech. There's going to be all kinds of AI. Like there's so many fields in tech that are exploding right now. And Mm -hmm. There's going to be the job of, you know, working in Walmart and driving an Uber and those kind of things for a while, right? But let's, let's, let's go into what we talk about, and you're good at this. So tell me, so construction, a bit like we need, we need more buildings. Yeah, I mean. What are, all, what are all the jobs that are involved in a condominium being developed? Being developed or being built? built and developed from the ground up from the from day yeah, one there's, till there's the time a, it closes millions of jobs there's surveyors okay. planners there's architects there's um there's all the people at the city that have jobs because of all this stuff on on the city side um and then you get into you know everybody that works for the developer i mean depending on the size of the developer you could have one person in the office or 150 people in the office right so there's all those jobs mm-hmm. accounting legal like on and on and on and on right uh, yeah. and then on and then when you get into construction then it's like holy cow like that's yep. where the jobs are really going to grow right yep. and even if they bring the robots there's still going to be tons of jobs because people have to like now service the robots, the robots. right <laughs> but yeah. the robots will be able to increase our efficiency so there'll still be the same amount of human jobs let's say or maybe even more human jobs but Doing we'll build work. way yes. more stuff we'll get way exactly. more outputs right and that's exactly. where things are going that's that that's where am, everything's I am going for the robots i'm behind the robot robots and immigration that's my uh, that they're in my camp. I'm there. Well, let's and, go. And automation, so uh, yes. so- software that makes life easier for everybody. So whether it's doing contracts automatically, whether it's you know doing filling out forms automatically, whether it's tying into accounting softwares. Like there's so many softwares. Like there's there's people right now that are doing surveying by drone. You know, and like there's so many cool crazy technologies that are coming out and so so tech jobs because that is very vague that that is that is a very vague statement so what you're saying is that um there'll be very similar jobs to what we have now but a lot of them will be in the construction and service industry a lot more warehousing industrial stuff like that but technology will be leveraged and they will be a big part of those jobs so instead of people changing jobs it's going to be more about the type, not the type of jobs, but more about how they do their jobs. Technology yeah. will be used a lot more. Yeah, and as long as you know, as long as like you Zoom understand that, that, yeah, but yeah. you have to understand that. So you cannot be in your fifties and sixties and say, "I don't use one of these smartphones." I'm not one of those kind of people. You're fucking dead. You're gone. You will not be able to have a job because, or you'll have a job greeting people at Walmart or serving food. So well, that's that's extreme, but I understand where you're going with this. It is extreme, but I mean, I think yeah. the next decade is going to be crazy extremes, just like now. Like, oh my God, the whole restaurant industry just got fucking evaporated overnight. These are the things that are going to keep happening to different industries over and over as new technologies come in. And, and mm-hmm. it, it, we will not have less jobs, just people, jobs are going to change. And if they yes. can't change okay. with them, they are. More jobs. We're going to have more jobs. We're going to have better jobs. And we're going to have jobs that are able to create higher outputs. Well, and in the short term, I mean, we need people to build all this housing. We need people that are willing to slug it out in the mud, slug it out in the concrete, fart around with steel, go ahead and get up on roofs with nail guns. Like we need all these people willing to do the work. And right now, like local Canadian kids, like my son's not going to go up on a roof with a hammer ever in his life. Right. Unless it's for a YouTube video he's filming and he thinks he's going to make a lot of money from it, but he's not going to do it for a living. Right. Mm-hmm. You're get it. And most of our kids are not going to go down that path. They're going to go down some kind of a tech. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make sure they're building they're building their first house with their bare hands. Otherwise, a- anyways, they're not, they're I, not allowed to drive a car. I have to pee so badly. So the show will have to end now or we will Beautiful. have. Thanks for having me. We will have a um, problem. I'm looking forward to next week with, uh, with our guest. Absolutely. uh, We'll have lots of content and I'll make sure I clear my schedule and and we'll be there. Please subscribe. If you are still listening, if you're still listening, my gosh, there are 18% of people that are still listening right now. So thank you. 
Or they leave the video running and, and walk away. But either way, thank you very much. Thank you. Please we appreciate it. Join us next week when we have our friend Bradley from Watson Estates. TK, always a pleasure, sir. We'll see you next week. I look forward to it. Thanks, Dale. Thanks.